thanks to its powerful features, this would give us a much fuller picture of the world as we know it now. The best picture ever seen was just taken by the James Webb Telescope. Come with us as we learn more about the James Webb Telescope and how it might make everything different. How it all began. After the telescope was first suggested in 1996, three groups of scientists and engineers from the public and private sectors got together to see if NASA could actually build the telescope. All three teams came to the same conclusion. The telescope could be built. In 1997, NASA agreed to pay for more studies to improve the technical and financial needs. By 2002, the agency had chosen teams to build the telescope's most important equipment and an advisory group of scientists to help with the building process. The telescope was officially named the James Webb Space Telescope that same year to honor the former head of NASA who made important contributions to the growth of the Apollo program. When engineers and scientists started building the Webb Telescope in 2004, they had to come up with new technologies and methods to meet the mission's strict science needs. Astronauts could fix and improve Hubble while working from Earth, but Webb would have to do all of its work from too far away for Earth to be able to help. Despite these problems, the team finished all 18 mirror pieces and put them through a lot of tests to make sure they met the standards. It was finally possible to picture the telescope going into space and doing its job. The James Webb Space Telescope was built from 2012 to 2013. Different parts of the telescope were being built in different places around the world. Building started on Webb's sunshield layers in 2013. These layers protect the telescope from too much heat and let it work well in space. Over the next few years, Webb's different science instruments were put through tough tests with high temperatures and shaking. At the same time, the telescope's 18 separate mirrors were carefully put on its backplane frame. All of these parts were put together and tested at NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. In 2017, the telescope and its equipment also went through one last round of environmental tests in a huge thermal vacuum room to make sure they would work properly when put into space. Webb was finally sent into orbit around the Earth on December 25, 2021, at 7.20 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. How it works. So how does the telescope really work? People often make space travel sound too easy, so when you first hear about it, it might sound like just another camera. That's not the case, it's very different, which is why it took so long to get from idea to start day. The James Webb Telescope is a strong infrared telescope made to look at things in space that are too cool or faint for regular telescopes to see. These are things like stars, galaxies, and planets that are just starting to form. The telescope is designed to pick up infrared light, which is what these faraway celestial bodies use to give off most of their heat. This lets us learn more about these things. Infrared light can't get through gas and dust, which makes it look cloudy to our eyes. Webb, on the other hand, can see ultraviolet radiation as well as visible light and infrared radiation. This lets it take pictures of things that are hidden by dust and gas, giving us a better view of things happening far away in the universe. It is also possible to study the features of things on Earth like their chemical makeup and temperature using infrared light. So, Infrared light is useful in a lot of areas of physics, science, and technology. It can help us learn more about how stars, galaxies, and other cosmic objects are put together and how they change over time. It can also be used to find signs of chemical pollution in our environment. The telescope has a big collection of mirrors, high-tech imaging and spectroscopy tools, and cutting-edge thermal control systems that let it work in harsh environments like space, which you already know is very harsh. Because this camera is meant to go into space by itself, it had to be built so that it could handle anything out there without any help. After the telescope was shot into space and separated from its launch vehicle, it unfolded and started its long trip to its goal, going through a complicated set of steps as it went. There were several important steps in this process, such as going across the moon and breaking up into different pieces. The telescope became one of the most powerful tools of its kind as soon as it was fully set up. How it got to space. Let's take a look at the steps this groundbreaking telescope took to get into space before we talk about why it was so important. The launch was the first thing that had to be done. The solar array was put in place after the launch. Two special pallets were put out on the third day of the trip while the astronauts were still inside the ship. The important sun shields for Webb were stored on these boxes. These shields keep the telescope cool and allow it to work properly in space. 
The placement of these shields was very important for making sure that the camera could work well during its journey. On the fourth day, the tower that held the instrument package was moved to its final spot and put together. There were a lot of complicated steps in this process, but it all went smoothly because of how the telescope is built. The momentum flap was then raised. The sun's pressure works on the big sun shield, making a force that keeps the telescope stable. Next was the release of the sun shield membrane cover, which showed the tennis court size sun shields. After everything was set up, the sun shield and midbooms were put in place. The five pieces of the sun shield were then pulled apart. But this isn't the end. When the James Webb telescope was put into space, it had to go through a number of important steps. The second mirror and a frame to keep the smaller mirror in place were put in place on day 10. The main mirror wings were then stretched out on day 13, which made the telescope its full size and shape. After these steps were done, the telescope was ready to start its job of looking at stars and planets far away. What is the real point? What's interesting about the James Webb Telescope is that it wasn't really made to do just one thing. Quite a bit of things should be solved by it. Let's look into this some more. Going back in time, scientists like Daniel Einstein, an astronomer at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, can use telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope to go back in time and see galaxies when they were just starting to form. Light moves slowly, so a planet that is far away looks older than it really is. The telescope can look at the early history of galaxies to learn more about how they formed and how they changed over time. Because it can see galaxies so far away, scientists like Einstein can get a full picture of how galaxies form and change over time by looking at different galaxies at different stages of growth. Webb is great for studying faraway galaxies because it can see infrared light. The universe is expanding, which makes the light from these galaxies longer over time. This changes the color of light from visible or ultraviolet to infrared. Webb is very good at picking up infrared signals because it is big and cold. This lets it see much farther into space than other telescopes. This makes it possible for it to see galaxies as they grow and change, taking pictures of how they change over time. We can learn more about how galaxies form and grow thanks to Webb. This helps us understand the world better as a whole, putting together what we know. Researchers look at stars from the exact point where they were born. Stars are born from thick clouds of gas and dust that are called stellar nurseries. Because these clouds are so thick, visible light can't get through them. This makes it hard for scientists to use regular binoculars to study these areas. But infrared light can get through the dusty clouds more easily than visible light. This lets scientists see into the heart of these star nurseries in a way that other scientists can't. Because the Webb Telescope can see infrared light, scientists will be able to study these areas in much more detail than they could before. An infrared astronomer at the University of Arizona named Maria is the main director of one of Webb's cameras. She says this is because red light has a longer wavelength and can pass through the dust in our atmosphere better than blue light. Besides that, infrared light can go deeper into dusty galaxies than visible light. Because of this effect, the sun looks redder at night than during the day. At the same time, because it can see infrared better, Hubble has only been able to study the formation of stars on a surface level. The wider range of infrared bands on Webb, on the other hand, will let scientists see deeper into the dust and learn more about how stars are born and grow. It's hard to see black holes because they can trap light, which makes them some of the strangest things in the world. On the other hand, we can see how black holes affect the stars and galaxies around them. Scientists have been able to study different aspects of black holes using telescopes like X-ray telescopes. For example, they have been able to study how the violent shredding of nearby stars makes the area very hot and energetic near black holes. With the launch of NASA's Webb Telescope, its infrared equipment will allow scientists to learn more about black holes. They can learn more about black holes and the complicated physics that happens near them by looking at the cooler gases and stars that spin around them. Scientists are still studying black holes even though they don't seem to be visible. They will continue to be an important area of study in the future as well. When you look at stars in thick, dusty parts of space, it can be hard to study them, which is why we need telescopes like Webb. These obstacles can't be solved by optical telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope. The cool thing about Webb is that it can catch the light that was made by the stars themselves even through dust clouds. 
This means that scientists can use the telescope to look at parts of space that they can't see right now. The James Webb Space Telescope can pick up and study the light from stars that are blocked by gas and dust. This will help scientists learn more about the star's features. This will let scientists learn more about the structure and makeup of stars. Scientists will be able to learn more about how stars are made and how they change over time thanks to the new information. Scientists will be able to see stars in ways they haven't been able to before because of Webb's ability to pick up infrared light. This is another important part of space study, being able to see farther away. The most important thing to learn. The most important thing to learn about the telescope is how far away it can see. Scientists will be able to study things in the universe that are very far away because Webb will be able to see farther than any other telescope before it. This will let us learn more about the history and growth of the universe, which will change the way we look at space. We will also be able to learn more about exoplanets, which are planets that orbit stars other than our own. This will help us figure out if life might exist elsewhere in the world. Scientists have a hard time finding exoplanets because they are small and give off very little light compared to the stars they orbit. Also, they are often blocked by the light of their host stars, which makes it hard to see them with normal telescopes. Scientists can use a number of methods to find exoplanets and learn about their atmospheres, which are used by the Webb telescope. By looking at how a planet's light dims when it passes in front of its post star, scientists can figure out its size, mass, and temperature. Spectroscopy can be used to figure out what the planet's atmosphere is made of. To find planets that aren't as big, we have already found a lot of huge planets, and the telescope is very good at finding planets that aren't as big. Astronomers will be able to look at a wide range of planets, including those that are smaller and closer to the size of Earth. With the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers will be able to learn more about these smaller planets and their environments with the help of the telescope's advanced tools. This will give them a better idea of whether or not these planets could support life. Studying how light from a host star passes through the atmosphere of an exoplanet is an important way to learn about it. When light passes through the atmosphere of an exoplanet, it leaves behind patterns that scientists can study to find out what chemicals are there. This is especially helpful for figuring out whether or not there is water which is needed for life. Webb's high-sensitivity cameras will make it easier to spot these patterns, which will make it possible to find out more about atmospheres of exoplanets. Scientists will be able to learn more about the history and state of exoplanet environments thanks to the telescope. Webb will also be able to look at how light changes when an exoplanet passes in front of its host star. This method can be used to figure out how big the planet is and if it has any moons or rings. All of this information will help scientists learn more about exoplanets and figure out if they have the right conditions for life. Scientists can learn more about how planets form and change over time if they learn more about how exoplanets work. Webb's observations of exoplanets can help us understand how our own solar system formed and how it works. They can also tell us more about how planetary systems form and change over time. This will make it easier for scientists to study exoplanets and help them find ones that might be able to support life. Webb's advanced technology will make it easier to learn about smaller planets and their environments, which will make it easier to find planets that could support life. These include near-infrared spectrometers, which are used to measure the chemical makeup of planets. Mid-infrared cameras and spectrographs are also used to measure the thermal properties of planets. These tools will let scientists find out more about the atmospheres and surfaces of exoplanets, which will help us learn more about their history and evolution.